Honky Talk with Steve Edwards. And uh, who am I? Well, my name's Dave, and uh, I've known Steve for, gosh, probably going on 15 years now, maybe a little bit more, and uh, have learned more about mules and donkeys than I ever thought that I would. And so every Wednesday, I come with Steve. I bring your questions to Steve so that you can learn everything you need to know about the mule and donkey so you can get out there and enjoy being an equine owner. So like I said, my name's Dave and uh, this right here is Steve Edwards. And uh, Steve, how has the last week been treating you? Oh, it's been pretty good, partner. We've had some awesome weather. Uh, it was uh, 52 degrees here this morning. Pretty nice. And so we're... Uh, We've been enjoying that. I've been, uh, I did some work on my bass boat because I'm getting ready to do some fishing. Sure am. So, but it's been great around here, partner. How, how's the family doing? Family's doing good. Um, Isaac, my uh, seven year old, he saved for about two years and he just bought himself an iPod Touch. And about 48 hours, he got it taken away after it arrived. So now we have a go to. Oh. That's his currency now. His currency is technology. So, no, he saved for two years, got an iPod Touch, and that's been a big to-do around the house. So he's been enjoying that. But, yeah, about uh, about uh, 48 hours in, he was not very pleased with some of the things that he was responsible for. And he let his mother know that, and I let him know that we would not stand for that. And so now we know exactly what to go for when we want to get his, uh, get some obedience up in here, but he's doing pretty good overall. I've got some family in from out of town. Matter of fact, after our show today, I'm going to go have dinner uh, with my aunts who flew in from Kentucky and some of my cousins. So it's good. Hey, we've got a few folks hopping on here. And while uh, Cowboy Ken and some of our other friends are saying hello, we'd like to hear from you. The way this works is uh, first and foremost, we would love to know that you're watching. So in the comment section, you already see a few folks doing it. We'd love you to join in. Put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like today. We just want to see you, know you, uh, learn about your story, and say hi to you. Uh, in this world of technology, it's very easy to forget that we are all real people. And uh, we are all, we all have value. And there's just something special about knowing that you're here watching and us being able to acknowledge you. Uh, and say thank you. So it, we know that it's a uh, it's a lot of things you could be doing with this time, and the fact that you're here means a lot. So put your name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like in the comment section. The second thing, this show is all about you answering every question that you could ask, so that you can get the results that you need. So put your questions in the comment section. We get to them all. We make sure to get answers for everything that you got doesn't matter if you know that we've talked about it on a past stream or you think it might be too simple. Nothing's too simple and nothing is too repetitive. We love answering the same question over and over again because it gives us another opportunity. Steve loves talking. So it gives us another opportunity to wind him up and let him go. And who knows what he's going to say different this time than he did last time. Uh, finally, the third thing that we ask, if you're on YouTube, we just love for you to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up to the video. That lets YouTube uh, know that it's worth showing our broadcast to other folks who are on YouTube. So we ask that you do that. And if you're on Facebook, you click the share button, share it to your profile, or you can just go ahead and tag a friend or family member in the comment section so they know. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead. We'll get started saying hello. Oh, what you got there? Did you get an iPod touch? How did you, where'd that come from? <laughs> My granddaughter. Oh my goodness, did you get that for her? Or did she get that for you? No, actually what I need it for is uh, you know, the hot rod club that I belong to, the East Valley Cruisers. Yeah. It's got, uh, I I'm the announcer on that deal. So I got all kinds of, of uh, beach boys and all that kind of stuff that I grew up with right here on this here little e-pod thing, whatever it is, yeah. That's very cool. Isaiah, my nine-year-old, he now wants an iPod Touch. So he's asking me every day, Dad, you finding a good deal on an iPod Touch? You finding a good deal? And so we're trying to find him one. Hey, let's get to uh, let's get to our first question while folks are coming in and uh, saying hello and uh, putting their name in the comment section. This one came from YouTube. Callie or Kathy asked, when I ride, I use a loose rein 
to be easy on the mouth. Um, I like to use a hackamore. Um, any comments there on using loose rain to be easy on the mouth and using a hackamore, Steve? I love a loose rain. That is exactly what we should be doing. Here's the problem, folks. When you're holding on to them reins and you constantly are feeling the mouth or you're constantly are feeling the nose, you are going to eventually be teaching them how to brace. They will brace their throat latch, all five ma major neck muscles, uh, which is along the crest of the neck, down to the middle of the neck, along the esophagus, and two along the throat latch. And uh, they will tighten those up. And why is that? All they're trying to do is protect themselves. You may have my bit, my hack, and more whatever. But folks, you have to ride with uh, a bit. Uh, now, can you ride with a mechanic, hack, mechanical hackamore? Yes. A mechanical hackamore is a wonderful trail tool. If, okay, get that in your mind. If your mule is well trained, if you can neck rein right, left with one hand, back up one hand, stop one hand, that's a start. If you can side pass using one hand, turn on the forehand using one hand, turn on the hindquarters one hand, guess what? You can ride in a mechanical hackamore. Yes, you're not being nice to the mule by not putting a bit in his mouth. You're being cruel to the mule when you are using a hackamore only or a bozales or a halter wait a minute steve gosh that's that don't that don't sound right uh I, i'm on the nose i'm not in the mouth listen mules and donkeys care more about their nose than they do their mouth so your constant pressure even the weight from the mechanical hackamore even the weight from the rope halter even the weight from the bozales even that is enough to take and make the mule uncomfortable. Now, will they get trained to it? Yes, without you in the saddle. Folks, when you are introducing a new bit, when you're in introducing anything to do with the nose, when it comes down to writing, you're going to use the sur single, put them in the sur single, turn them loose in a round pin and let them figure it out. Yeah. Here's the problem. As soon as you put your hands on them reins, it's got a completely different communication value. As soon as you put your hands on those reins, you are going to be making your mule donkey uncomfortable. Yes. Okay. Now they are looking for a loose rein. That means there's just the pressure of that hackamore hanging on their nose of that bozal, of that rope halter, all right? As soon as you pick it up, you are now being uncomfortable to them. And what they want you to do is let go, okay? So you're going to go to the right, let go. You're going to stop, let go. As soon as they are starting to turn right, turn left, stop, let go. You see, they're looking for the release. That's what they're doing. And all they want to do is get you to let go of their nose. Now, it's the same thing with the mouth, all right? Same thing with their mouth. But they, they are not as uncomfortable with their mouth as they are with their nose. Now, here's the deal with the mouth. When you are riding a mule, donkey with a bit. Here's the problem. You've got a donkey mouth, donkey jaw, donkey head on the mule and the donkey. You do not have a horse head. No, you may have it be smaller and this sort of thing, but the palate is different. Therefore, it is important that you use the correct bit for your correct writing abilities. Now, 
If you are training, you're going to use a snaffle bit, not a smooth snaffle bit, because all that's going to do is teach them to brace. What you are going to use is would be the double twisted wire snaffle bit. The downside of that is if you just use the bit by itself, the mule will brace, stick his nose out, throw his head up, and take off running with you. That's why I developed the Mule Riders Martingale. Now, in each space, it's important you do not create one wrinkle or two wrinkles. Do not tell the mule this is where he has to have it. He will start getting his tongue over top of the bit, and he will continually do that unless you let it hang down on a John mule bumping the canines, which are the teeth between the incisors and your molars. And with a Molly mule, it is going to be a, a hanging all the way down to the incisors and they'll pick it up and they'll carry it. Don't get in a hurry to adjust it to that spot. If you train them in a snaffle bit, the mule Redis Martingale, you have six months of foundational training before you are completely ready to go into the trail rider bit. Okay. Now there's, there's a, there's a lot right there. I just talked about, and here's what's important for y'all to understand is that bit that hackamore is only as good as your hands. If you are riding your mule like this all the time, you are constantly holding on to the mule. If you are riding like this, that means you're training. Training, okay? If two hands, that is called direct reining, you will be using on your mule rider's martingale. When you are riding in a mechanical hackamore, you're going to be using one hand. When you are using my trail rider bit, you're going to be using one hand. So I, and I can keep on going more, uh, but that's just to give you an idea. Awesome. Very good. Like I said, we wind steep up and let them go and uh, lots of good questions. Next question here. This one comes in from Trey. He says, Steve, I bought a 13 year old John and Molly about seven months ago from an older gentleman that got in a car accident and is not going to be able to ride. Uh, I bought them to hunt mountains. The Molly is just a packer and is good at her job. The John is what I ride and has a good foundation. I've not done any groundwork yet. I've purchased your how to communicate with my mule and also the Colt foundation videos. I have issues with John number one. He's, I think we did this one last week, didn't we? Issues around cattle. Yeah, and I've talked to the guy. You did talk to the guy. We did this one last week. You know what? Let me just finish it since we're talking about it here. New folks will get to yeah. hear it. Um, somehow it got sent in twice. Um, he's very uncomfortable around cattle. I can ride him for hours and he never boogers at anything, it seems. But the moment we get around cattle, doesn't like it. We have about 300 head of cattle and I've used him to sort and gather, but he's not comfortable with it. I don't want to go further around him with cattle until I can address the issue. I have your come along hitch and don't know if I should just start there and work on him on the ground to address it or what your thoughts are. Second issue, he's buddy sour with the molly. I currently have them in the same pen, but I am building them separate pens. Will that help the issue? Is there something else that can be done? Give us just a real quick, since I read this one here, and uh, glad you're yeah. talking. Okay, so overall, this. You're always going to have the buddy problem. I don't care if you put them all in separate pens. Split second, they come together, they're buddies. That's called an equine. That's the way life is. That's the way God designed them. All right, now, next part. You can work cattle on the ground if they're pretty gentle. But some of these will sure make you climb a fence. So you're going to be working in a saddle. That's where you're going to use the mule riders martingale, the two hands, and to direct them and, and move them around. Yes, they're uncomfortable at first. But if you'll do your groundwork uh, with, with turn on a forehand, turn on a forehand, turn on a hind quarter, side passing, if you'll have all that done first, so that they know how to do that. Then go work your cattle. Cattle, there's nothing like the butt of a cow to train a mule. It's a fantastic thing because they have to have, they're keeping their mind on that cow, but then they have to listen to you. So it's really nice. So get all your foundational training done first and then go in and work your cow. 
good for them. Will they spit you out sometimes? Yeah. Will you have a problem? Yeah. Will they stay consistent? No. Okay. As soon as you have a bull turn and hit you, then by golly, they're going to have a hard time trying to go at them cattle again. And that's the way it is. So going on, uh, you, you know, get out there and ride, ride around them cattle. When you go and you go at a cow and he kind of hesitates, then go to the right. right. Then you come back to the left toward that cow. He hesitates, go to the left, come back to the right. Always turn him back toward the cow. Now you can do the same thing with a crick or anything else, but here's the deal, folks. And I said this last time, I have ran bears up a tree sitting on a mule. I have done that. I've run mountain lions up a tree sitting on a mule. Does that bear want to be near that mule? Yeah, he likes to eat him. <laughs> but does that mule want to be around that bear? No, nope. but because of my communication using my legs, I can push that bear. So yes, go work with the cows. Very good. Uh, let's take a look here. We've got Cowboy Ken hanging out from 65 degrees. Sun is setting. Uh, Kent is watching from Blue, Oklahoma, 64 degrees cloudy. Rode my first mule yesterday. Hey, welcome to the family. Good to have you with us, Kent. Hey, Faye is taking us international. Good day from stormy old uh, or Queensland, Australia. Uh, Lisa is watching from McEwen, Tennessee. Good to see you again, Lisa. 74 degrees, just got done working on pressure and release. What's pressure and release, Steve? Well, okay, so I want my mule to side pass. And this is my right side. This is my left side. So I want my mule to go to the left. So I put pressure on the right-hand side. I have no pressure on the left-hand side. So the mule doesn't like that pressure from my calf to start with. I push with the calf and the mule weighs, moves away from it. What I do not do is, is uh, disengaging hindquarters. I disengage shoulders. What I do not do is do uh, go around in circles to get them to stop doing a problem. I don't do that, okay? So there you are, pressure release. I put pressure with my leg and they move off to the left. If I take my reins in my hands, when I go to the right, there's pressure on the left and they'll go to the right. So pressure release. Very good. Uh, Jim is watching from Pompano Beach, Florida today, 81 degrees with slight breeze overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. David is watching from East Texas, 85 degrees and partly cloudy. Good to have you here again, David. Kent says, uh, I was born, oh, he's talking to Jim, born in Homestead, Florida, miss it to a degree, less people in Oklahoma. Uh, let's see here. Reyes is watching on YouTube. Hi, cowboys. Good to see you. Beautiful 63 degrees, sunny blue sky in Lafayette, Colorado. Perfect fall day. That's Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. Hey, here we go, Steve. Linda, the mule servant, and Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule in sparkling, crisp, rural Ohio. Theo just now finished his pedicure. And it's your turn now, Linda. You do his pedicure and he'll do yours. Kent says, I was one, I was wrong about the weather in blue Oklahoma. Currently 81, low tonight is 64. There we go. Uh, Joyce is watching from, hey, Alberta, Canada. International again. Fiona's watching. Maybe it's going to rain later. 22 degrees Celsius in Southwest Victoria, Australia. There we go. International again. Hooves on fire says, my donkey doesn't run. Keep that donkey in control. Joyce says, the screen froze. Refresh, Joyce. That should take care of it. David Cantors, Port Angeles, Washington. Weather can't make up its mind, but right now it's 56 degrees. Joyce says she's back on now. We got Albert watching from Arkansas. Beautiful 80 degree day. Folks, put your comments, put your questions in the comment section. We'll get to them here. Uh, Steve, uh, David says, Steve, here's a hoof question about my eight month old Molly. Left hoof, front hoof, left front hoof. The outer wall of the inside part of the hoof has started growing down under the hoof. It curls under so she walks on it. What does he need to do there, Steve? He needs to trim it off. Now, if you don't have a pair of nippers, you can use a rasp 
and you can rasp it off. Here's the thing with your babies, folks. Anything under three years old, you keep them feet balanced. Right now, what's happening is, is the outside of the hoof wall looks like this. And it's moving under, curling under. Well, that, what that is is from a lot of moisture and then dry and moisture and dry. So before it starts curling under, you need to rasp this off so that it's straight again. Always, when you look at the hoof, the frog is pointing toward the center of the hoof. If the frog is not pointing toward the center, then you need to trim or you need to do some type of, of rasping in order to get, keep the outside wall from going wrong. That's what's happening here. That outside wall is curling under, kicking the foot in. So you'll end up with crooked feet and crooked legs because the problem is just like tires on your car. If you do not keep air in the tires and keep it consistently, you're going to wear uneven. And then if you don't keep your suspension in good place, your tires are going to wear uneven. Same thing with your mule's foot. All right. Cruising along here. Um, Bill is sharing to mules of Ohio and mules of Indiana. Beautiful fall weather, 65 degrees and sunshine. Nancy is watching. Hello, Stephen Dave. Nice to see you again. It's Nancy and Donkey here from a warm 72 degrees in Mountain City, Tennessee. My vet's been out, so no idea of what minerals are missing in his diet yet. Donkey is four. Will he ever get over being scared of everything? A leaf blows by and you'd think it was a cougar after him. He's skittish and jumpy. Well, you know, that that can happen. You do have from time to time uh, a donkey or a mule that's going to be a little on the skittish side. The good thing about it is those skittish mules and donkeys can flat get something done pretty quick. You don't have to spur them all the time to make them go. They're ready to go. And you have to take and build a good foundation with that kind of a donkey in order to be able to do what you want to do. When I say good foundation, you're going to start with your come along rope and you're going to do your groundwork. Now, let me touch on this, folks. I've got my, my ground communication kit. The halter is not the important part of the ground communication. The come along hitch is. Four, six months is how you build a foundation. Six months. That's what builds a foundation. That's what you got to have. So I have folks tell me all the time, they use my halter if they're not getting anywhere. Well, yeah, if you don't build a foundation with a come along hitch, you're wasting your time putting a halter on. Now, again, I want to go back to my favorite cowboys and stuff on grit just watch them on grit you don't see halters underneath their bridles you go ride with me down on one of these ranches you you don't see me or randy or anybody else with a halter on underneath we don't do it okay our animals are well trained so that if i drop a rain on the ground they will stand there that's what it's got to be does it take some time to get there yes it does you bet but folks, don't rely on that halter. It's the come along hitch. You go to get your donkey, go to get your meal, come along hitch. Do you tie them up? No. I've had people tell me, I just had one just the other day. Hey, Steve, I wanted to let you know there could be a problem. Oh, well, they had this mini uh, mule and then she had her dad who said is experienced horseman, experienced mule man, and this sort of thing. And this donkey is, this mule is giving him a fit. So what he did was, what I tell you folks not to do, do not tie the mule hard and fast with the come along hitch. Dally, yes. Dally to a horn or a snubbing post, yes. Not hard, tied hard and fast. That way you can control it using a dally. So what happened was the mule is throwing a fit. Remember, it's a mini, so he's small to the ground. He's throwing a fit. Well, as he throws a fit, rears in the air, he pulls the come along off behind the ears and around the nose. Now it's choking him out around his neck. And they got worried about that. And so they went ahead and cut the rope. Nope. Nope. Shouldn't have done that. Okay. Let him hit the ground. I've never, ever, 
ever choked one down and and had them to where they they turned blue on me and died they always got up and paid attention do i like doing that sort of thing nope don't care for it used to do it but when you get yourself in a jam like that and you hear me you got yourself in a jam it's going to happen when you're around these animals you got a good chance of getting hurt killed maimed whatever broken bones that's life that's the way it is so come along hitch come along hitch come along hitch don't rely on that halter do your ground foundation first uh let's keep cruising along here we've got uh carolyn watching from 49 degrees minnesota with some wind nancy is uh is here thank you nancy oh we just talked to you nancy there we go lisa says exactly carla is watching from british columbia starting to snow my mule was in the round pen with lots going on uh moving and loading horses reba was going crazy i put the come along hitch on and she softened drop her head and walked out like a puppy love it you're not the only one we've heard stuff like that from carla so thank you for sharing that uh let's see here johnson's taxidermy sherman johnson watching from norman oklahoma 72 degrees yvonne is here from oregon i have a five-year-old donkey that was a bottle baby she won't and let's see hey get the rest of that question in there uh yvonne and we'll answer we'll answer it for you um, Janet says, just got my groundwork kit. Looking forward to working with it and my Molly. Uh, let's see here. Roger is watching from Milan, New York, 72 degrees and sunny. Hey, Ron and Virginia are here from Sunnyburg Hill, Ohio. Steve, my mule is getting lumps on her rear knees. Feel like fluid in them. I don't know if she bumped it or if it's from when she laid down. Steve, do you know, you know what it could be? uh bumps or is the whole knee swelled uh there's that's two different things there uh so um it, it could be a number of things it could be she got kicked it could be she tried to jump over something and hit her knee it could be lots of things um uh, it could be there's a if it was in arizona i'd say there's probably a prickly pear in it a stick sticker uh, so you might look for that as well, but see if it's puffy and, and just on the knee only. So Yvonne got her question and Ron and Virginia, if you want to add some more information, please feel free. Um, five-year-old donkey that was bottle baby. She doesn't like to give me space and she nibbles and sometimes wants to bite. She is quick. I pinch her nose or pull her whiskers, but it doesn't work. What type of advice would you give to Yvonne? Yeah, bottle babies is tough. Uh, you know, everybody's baby them. They've had them in close, giving them the bottle, and it's all really cute and stuff. Thing is, is later on, y'all, you pay the price because you let them in your space already. So they think it's okay. So you should give you a bottle baby. It should be held at a distance and let them suck. Not up close. Pet him. Oh, that's nice. It's cute. Give us a bottle again. No, don't do that. You end up with this problem. Okay. Pinching them on the nose ain't going to work. Slapping them on the head ain't going to work. What's going to happen when they get into your space, take the edge of your boot and still look at them in the face and kick them in the shin, right in the cannon bone. Kick them there. Tell them that's your space. And when you kick them, they will get back out of your space. Now, also say the word back, back. Now, before they get into your space, everybody... You're letting this already happen, folks. It's already too late. If they're in your space, that's your fault. Your timing needs to be, you fix it while they're still five foot away. So this is what I would do. They're coming toward me. I would kick some dirt toward them. I would use the edge of my boot and kick some dirt toward them. And, and I'd say, hey, and you'll see that they'll start, they'll start looking at that dirt like, well, why did that dirt move? And they, hmm, okay. Let me give you an example. I was up in Minnesota at the zoo up there. Two big pertrons was mucking out these handlers. And I mean mucking them out. So I said, what happens? Well, the one lady told me she had a broken arm because she got knocked on the ground. The other one said he stepped on her toe. And when we get ready to feed them their grain, they come in and they, they knock us around. I said, oh, okay, that's easy. And so they're looking at this little short, fat old cowboy. 
I can walk in with two big buckets of grain. And here's two pertrons out there, 2,100 pounds, big, huge things. I can stand under their head and their nose not touch my head. I'm 5'6". So I'm saying, come on, come on. I'm shaking the buckets. And here they come in. Everybody else is up on the fence going, let's see what's going to happen to him. They started coming in. And as I'm pouring the grain in, I see the one come in. I kick some dirt toward him. And he stopped to look at that dirt. The other one kind of come around the other side. I kicked some dirt toward him. He stopped looking at the dirt. I went ahead and poured the rest to feed him. Turned around. They're still looking at the dirt. I walked in, walked through the gate. You should have seen the look of everybody going like, that was too easy. Yeah, so what did I do? I fixed the problem before it became a problem. If they're already on top of you, it's too late. Kick some dirt toward them. If you've got your come-along hitch, shake the come-along hitch hitch okay but if they're coming to you and they you don't have anything on you you know to like a quirk or something like that kick them with your with your shin kick them in the shins and your cannon bone with the side of your boot and they'll get them out of your space and as you're kicking say back 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 and let them move back a couple feet not 40 feet folks just a couple feet and that'll work for you Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Ron in Virginia says it's swelled on the back side of the knee. Yes, it's puffy, feels like fluid and is squeezy. Oh, the the back side. Okay. So uh, that's a hawk. And so if, if it is puffy, uh, then most likely she's either kicked something or something has kicked her. Do you have your animals out altogether? That's the first question. Now, the next thing, how do we fix it? How long has it been uh, when it's when it's puffy like that and this sort of thing? Uh, sometimes you can just leave it go and it'll be fine. Is she? Uh, that's one thing. Number one, how long has it been? The other thing is, does she walk normal or does she walk with a limp? All right. So there's a follow up for you. Now let me Virginia. let me do a little let me do a little bit of fix it here. All okay. right. Now, when we have a puffy tendon. Or if we have a puffy uh, hawk like that, okay? Uh, have somebody on the come along hitch so you can fix it. Now, you take a good liniment like Bigelow's. You take some water first and you wet it all down, get it good soaking wet. And then you take some Bigelow's, put yourself some rubber gloves on. You take some Bigelow's <coughs> and rub it really good on that place. Now it's going to create heat. Now take your cellophane, like your sandwich wrap, and you put yourself, start from the top and wrap your way down, and then wrap back up, kind of snug. Once you do that, then get yourself a, uh, a vet wrap, and vet wrap it, and you build yourself a polis. And what that's going to do is going to help take some of the swelling out. Now, do not put them out in the open. Put them in a small pen, like 10 by 10, 20 by 20 at the most, and then uh, keep an eye on them because sometimes they'll try to chew that off. Now, I can also tell you, be quick about this because if, if when that thing starts getting hot from that big lows, ha uh -huh, yeah, uh, it, it can be a problem. But listen, I blow a lot of tendons and cap some hawks, and the cap and hawks usually comes from, unfortunately, another animal kicking them. So, folks, don't keep your animals together. It's the best way to get a lot of vet bills. All right. Casey sent in a message. Casey from Immigrant, Montana. Cloudy and 55 with the feeling that winter is knocking on the door. My mule, Muskrat, got spooked by the wind while I was saddling him, uh, which in turn had him rip the tail off, rip the rail off he was tied to. After a bit of him freaking out, I got him calmed down and settled. After about 30 minutes, I got back to saddling him and went to hop on and he bolted with only one boot in the stirrup. After about a minute of one-legged rodeo, he finally threw me off. Nothing broken, but couldn't walk for a few days. Now I'm ready to try again, but as I go to saddle again, he's a little nervous and snorts a bit. Any thoughts on how me and my mule can get our collective confidence back uh, so we can get back to happy rides again in the Montana high country? Come along, hitch. Come along, hitch. Come along, hitch, folks. Listen. Tie into a hitch and rail, here you see one of the problems, okay? 
when you teach them with that come along hitch to stand still, they'll stand still. All right. Now, to give you an idea, Bishop at the World Championships, almost 200 animals turned loose in there and people. And them animals are running free. And the only thing I've got on my mules and my donkeys that, I mean, that my mules and my horses, me and my three packers, we got the come along hitch on them or at this time, most likely the rope halter the majority of the time. With that rope hanging on the ground, they've got so much respect for that rope hanging on the ground. They don't want to move. And you can see us in there throwing the pack outfits on, throwing the saddles on, and them mules ain't tied to nothing. Them horses ain't tied to nothing, and they're standing still. Okay, now I'm not saying, now Fluffy, stand still while I put this saddle on. I'm not doing that. I'm flying. I can pack an empty mule in 58 seconds. That's the pack saddle, boxes, top cover, and throw a 40-foot lash rope, 58 seconds. And, and I'm not to being real quiet and gentle. I'm hollering at my other packers. Hey, where are you? Where are you? What are you doing? What have you got done? What have you got done? And we're hollering back and forth to each other. And we're getting packed. We packed five mules, saddled three horses, and went around a half mile track in five minutes, 48 seconds. Yeah. And when we went out, there was a lot of animals that didn't have halters on them and weren't caught, and they ran with us as well. So I said, I'll say this. Where are you going to start? Not riding, folks. Riding is the icing on the cake. You got to build the cake. Why get yourself hurt again? It ain't important. Okay. Put the come along hitch on and start getting them to learn standing still and quiet. Put the come along hitch on and do it like it shows in that video. You'll see a cowboy from Montana in there. He's a buckaroo. And you'll see what he's done. He led that mule with a pickup truck. <laughs> Yeah, but in result, he can lead it with a with a piece of baling twine. So do you do your groundwork first? Get your come along hitch on there. Teach the mule to stand still and quiet without tying them to a hitching rail. Did I train them my mules to tie to a hitching rail? Yes, to a trailer as well, to a tree as well, to a top. Yeah, all that stuff. But number one thing is I taught him first: don't move your feet. And I, and I saddle them and everything without having them tied. They're ground tied. Uh, cruising right along here. We've got uh, Wait watching from Del Rey Beach, Florida. Good to have you here. Um, Ron in Virginia says, it cup, it's, it's been a couple of days. She doesn't seem lame. I've put DMSO and absorbing, absorbing Junior on it. Yes, she is out with a horse. Yeah, well... He most likely kicked her in the hawk. It's, it's usually what happens is the mule is wanting to do what they want them to do. So they kick them to make them go where they want them to go. So folks, don't, don't put them together. You know, you're going to end up with a capped hawk. So absorbing is good. The MSO is good. But you got to create that heat and keep it in there. That's why I tell you, take that handy wrap. It's clear. And you can wrap it around from the top of the hawk and come down around the hawk and come down the bottom of the hawk, come back up around again to the top. That keeps the absorbing and this sort of thing and makes a polis. That's why it helps it to go. And then put your vet wrap on it and keep the mule quiet. It cannot be out in the big open. You're never going to get it healed if you let them go. Put them in a small pen and do it that way. Uh, let's see here. Polly is watching from Barnesville, Minnesota, rating here and pretty cool. Uh, Michelle. Hi, Stephen, Dave. I spent the weekend with Susan Soder Soderberg. I rode donut. What is riding donut? Just oh, in man. circles. Oh man. No, you ready for this? I'm ready. Donut is the name of my mule. Donut was my mule. All how right. about that? Now you want to know how she got the name Donut? How's that? Okay. When I first heard about this mule, I was looking everywhere for black or dark bay stock and legged mules. Everywhere I was looking. And I finally found one in Arkansas. So me and Morty Van Heron, we jumped in the trailer, jumped in the truck, and we headed to Arkansas. When we got there, Here's this, folks. 
They got all these mules, donkeys, ostriches, all kinds of animals, uh, pigs, cows, chickens, all running around out there free. And Donut, this little stock and legged Molly Mule, Missouri Foxtrotter. Era, uh, uh, she is a world champion as well. Now, they would go to the day old donut store and they would get donuts and the, all the animals were lined up all along the fence. She would hand each one of them a donut and each one of them would then eat their donut. That's how donut got her name. Now she ended up getting sold to, uh, uh, Mark, uh, in, in California and Mark, was uh, the chancellor of the LA college system, the whole college system in California. Mark Drummond was his name and him and his wife come over to my ranch. They, I, 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 at that time I was selling all of my meals and all of my equipment because I was be going to be on the road doing seminars. And so uh, Mark bought my meals, Marcy bought a meal as well. And then I ended up going to Pierce College and building the first mule trainers program in the nation. So long story short, Susan Sonderberg was one of my students and at Pierce College. She went through the program and then she came here to Arizona and spent two months with me training here. And long story short, when Mark went to, uh, where did he go? Um, the immigrants. Okay, uh, he went over there to to run their college system over there. So he sold the mules, a donut and, and a couple other mules that she, he got from me, sold them to Susan Sonnenberg. And Susan is one of my top trainers. She's an excellent trainer. And ma'am, if you rode donut, you rode one awesome mule. That's cool. That's really cool uh cool well cruising right along uh thank you for sharing that um uh michelle hannah is watching from dunnelin florida 78 degrees ordered to come along eagerly awaiting would like to order a saddle need a lot of help well, we want to help you you can give steve a call anytime 602-999-6853 leave a voicemail. Steve's usually out on the ranch uh, doing all sorts of different things, but he'll get back to you and we'll get you taken care of, Hannah. Cindy is watching from California. Hey, Yolanda says, I'm watching too. Yes, you are. We're glad to have you here, Yolanda. Uh, Ron and Virginia say, thank you, Steve. Uh, let's see here. Cindy says, I'm trying to do what you say about getting my mule to give me space, but he still walks on me. How do I get him to keep walking when I pony him? He is two years old. Okay, number one, a two-year-old has not got ponying on his mind. It's playing and dinking around. So it's very difficult. Uh, number one, use the come along hitch. Make sure you get your foundation work done on the ground before you get in the saddle and lead. These babies just want to play. This is too much work having to be led in behind another animal. Okay, so get your groundwork done first. Make sure it's all correct and, and consistent. Three, six, nine, 12 steps. And then when you get in a saddle, do small segments, some figure eights, a circle, nice big figure eights, small circles, big circles, small figure eights. And don't go out on a trail. Don't do that. Get them used to following at the right place and going around to the speed that you want. As you progress, then take them out there. Folks, one of the downsides of, of humans, we want to get it all done now. Don't do that. Mm -mm. Do a little bit at a time, small steps, you'll get a lot done. Great. Uh, let's see here. Jack is watching from Johannesburg. Tuning in late tonight, 65 degrees and rain. Rode a few miles last night. We got within 30 yards of a bull elk last night. That is fun. Uh, Michelle says it was an yeah. honor to ride donut. I got a question here. Uh, this one comes from uh, Julie. She says, how do you stop pawing? 
I have a new mule, so she has been pulled away from her buddies and now at my place. I've been riding for about one to two hours a day, but she still paws. Yeah, well, pawing is this. It's a natural thing that the good Lord gave these mules and donkeys uh, and in equine horses as well. Pawing is, I want something. Okay, they paw to, to get the snow off, to get to the grass. They paw to break the ice, to get to some water. They paw and say, I don't want to be tied here. I want to be doing something else. I want to be with my buddies. And that's what they're doing. They're throwing a fit back and forth, back and forth, pawing, pawing, pawing. And they will dig a, a, a hole to China, folks. They'll do it. Okay. So what do you do? Number one, put an adjusted rope halter on them. That's correct. So that when they move to the right, the halter bumps them. They move to the left, the halter bumps them. They pull back, the halter bumps them. Now, underneath their feet is going to be a rubber mat, a big rubber mat. And like a, you take it out of your trailer or something, uh, my rubber mats around my hitch and rails and places that I tie are six by eight and they're heavy, real heavy. So when they pull, they can't pull them up. Folks, either put them on concrete or put them on wood floors or something like that. When they paw them, they can't paw dirt. Now, you're not gonna stop it. You can take and get them to quit pawing in one spot, move them five foot over, they'll start pawing again because it's a new life, new part to their life. Can you help them to understand that pawing is going to be uncomfortable? Yes. What do you do? Okay. Uh, unfortunately, my, my very good friend, Randy, uh, if, that you hear me talk about down on the Andrada Ranch, is right now not doing too well. But I've got a set of hobbles uh, on my web store that are orange. And what you're going to do is you're going to take those hobbles, take loose the, the keeper in the middle, and put one above each leg. You're going to hang a chain with a snap, a heavy chain. I'm talking one inch links, heavy chain that's going to bump on the cannon bone. When the mule paws, that chain is going to slap them and hit, hit them on a the cannon bone and make them uncomfortable. When they quit pawing, now get this in your mind. When they quit pawing, the split second they do, you take those hobbles off right away. That way they see that when they quit pawing, that chain is not going to bang on their legs. It's not going to make them uncomfortable. Okay? And they'll, they'll figure that out. They'll figure out that when they see those hobbles hanging up where they can see them, they won't want to... Uh, paw right there. Now, I'll tell you a little story. I left to go on a clinic and I had a friend of mine, Jim, feed all the mules. I had about 20 head here and they all had feeders. They're all individual and in, all in a 10 by 20 stall, 10 by 20 stall. And when I left, I only had one newcomer that was pawing. He was pawing because he was saying, hurry up, get my feet here now. I want my feet. I want my feet. So I would feed him last and if he was still pawing i would put the feed down outside of the pen and i would not feed him because i did not want him to think that when he pawed he got fed okay so uh that's how i can keep on going the thing with the chain and the hobble is it's going to bang on him now it can get pretty ugly folks <clears throat> especially if they got the real bad habit here's another thing that happens as soon as you get back to the corral and you pull the saddle off right away and go throw them in the feed, guess what they want to do? Hurry up and get back to the corral, take the saddle off, get me fed. And they're going to paw saying, wait a minute, I want my saddle off. I want to go to the feed. Don't do that. When you come back from a ride, pull the bridle off only. If they give you a nice quiet ride back, loosen up the cinches. If they give you a fuss on the way back, tighten them cinches. Because guess what? They think that hitching post is a good place to be at. Therefore, they're going to get the saddle off and get fed. No, no. You make that saddle post 
at that hitching post uncomfortable. You tighten them cinches up and you let that mule stand there for several hours. When they quit pawing, when they kept moving around, only is when you pull the saddle off and put them up. So there's a whole gamut for you. Awesome. Uh, hopping over to uh, Robin. Robin sent in a message. Hi, do you have any used saddles? I thought I would check this first. Uh, Steve, ha I've spoken with Steve. He's a wonderful maid, um, wonderful man. Do I have to wait one for be uh, wait for one to be made? I have good credit. Could you finance with a down payment? So, a couple questions here, Steve. First one: Do we have any used saddles? Second. Um, if somebody wants to buy one new, do you ever do like a layaway or anything like that? Layaway, I do do. I do not send the saddle until it's completely paid for. Now, finding a used saddle is next to impossible, folks. Um, I've been fortunate enough to find out about them here and there, and I've had some people tell me about them. And they usually can be a pretty decent price. Most of the time, most saddle, my saddles hang their value. So it's a $1,500 saddle. It's not going to drop 50% in price. It's not going to do it. So you, this is your lucky day, folks. Uh, I know of two people right now. One, the saddle has never been on a mule. She took the saddle out. She put it in her living room on the saddle stand. And the mule that she had ended up being a problem. And she decided... I'm not going to be riding this mule. So I'm not going to be riding. She was concerned. She's a she's a, a lady in her 60s. She was concerned. So I've got that mule, that saddle. I've got another one of a lady who put the saddle on a mule twice. The mule was a problem. Here's the thing, folks. Don't listen to these internet jockeys. Don't do it. Man, this guy gave both of these people this story of, oh, this is a, this is a gated mule from Kentucky. Yeah, folks, just because it's a gated mule from Kentucky don't mean it's a gated mule. This mule ended up couldn't gate for nothing. Besides that, she couldn't catch it, give her a hard time. And again, another lady in her 60s. Now, both these people have saddles for sale. I would be happy to give you the phone numbers if you email me, steve at muleranch.com. Or text me at 602-999-6853. Now, I don't want to hear about the saddles. The only thing I want to hear is, hey, Steve, I bought the saddle. That's it, okay? These saddles, I don't know anything about them other than the people saying they had problems with their mules and decided not to go with the mules. That's what they decided to do. It's not what I like to see. I like to see you get in there and and not, don't give up on the mule. Unfortunately, folks, you got people that'll tell you lies, and it's and it, it's it's a shame. It really is. Now uh, I know about those two saddles. So email me or text me. Now here's another thing. It's rare to find. I had one of my clients up in Colorado. He bought this really nice donkey. It's a mammoth donkey. Again, I can send you the information on it. It's, I don't know what they want for any of this stuff, folks. I have no idea. I just want to help out my mule and donkey people. So if you want a nice, gentle, uh, uh, mammoth donkey, riding donkey, uh, this donkey really looked good on footage on the video. He, pat, he did all the right things, uh, vet tests and all this stuff, and he's got it for sale. Now, the only reason he's got it for sale is that the donkey can't keep up with his mule. And folks, this happens all the time. Folks are trying to find a mule uh, that will keep up with another mule. Sometimes it's the rider, sometimes it's the mule, or the donkey in this case. But anyway, text me if you want them, if you want the information, and uh, haste, and I will turn around and sell them to you, send them to you. Sounds good. Uh, let's see here, continuing right along. We've got uh, Michelle asking, what do you suggest for a mule that bolts while leading it and pulls the rope from your hand? Come along, hitch. Come along, hitch. Come along, hitch. Folks, halters are not what you need to be doing to lead them from A to B. If they have a good foundation. Now, you hear that word? Foundation. 
not broke, not halter train, a good foundation. In other words, they respect the lead rope and they respect the person on the other end of the lead rope. So I would suggest my ground communication kit. Again, folks, it comes with a rope. It comes with an adjustable halter and most important part, how to do it, how to use it. Okay. Now, don't just say, okay, it's doing pretty good with the, with the come along hitch. I'm done. No, no. When you are building a foundation, a foundation is extremely important. It's over a six month time frame, four to six hours a week. That's a foundation. Once one learns how to pull away from you folks, it's not their fault. They're tired of that halter you're putting on them. Okay. Uh, I, I've got a, I've seen people that leave the halters on them all the time. Matter of fact, I had a picture sent to me, Dave, and you, you'll recognize it. It's a small donkey with a nylon halter on it, looking through uh, a barbed wire fence, all kinds of bad things. Never leave your halters on your animals. Best way to kill them or cripple them. Next question that we got here. This one came from Brooke on YouTube says, I just want to make sure I understand for hoof care. I need to use 50, 50 pine tar and linseed oil, and then a half cup of lanolin mixed all together and put the donkey white lines on the, on hooves. Would this be the same if we are not in an overly dry climate like Arizona? I am Eastern Washington. It is mostly dry, but not as much as Arizona. Well, it, the drier climate, yes, that makes a difference. But I, I use it to be able to keep my hoofs consistent, really consistent. You can brush it on the whole hoof. You can brush it on the backside. But if you brush it right on the hairline, then those natural oils will be going into the hoof and keep the hoof uh, good and consistent. Now, here's the thing, folks. Here's the problem with these uh, with these uh, mules and donkeys. That's really easy to get contracted heels, really easy. So that means the back of the heel comes around. And when that happens, you start crippling them because now the frog does not uh, stay soft and, and happy. And because of that, uh, that doesn't pump blood up and down the leg. So the hoof, folks, without a good hoof, you don't have a good donkey or mule. Um, James is watching from Holden, Missouri, 66 degrees and blue skies. We got another Michelle watching from Canada. Uh, let's see. Bill Rose is giving thumbs up. Linda makes a comment here. She says, Stephen, Dave, never doubt how much good your weekly webcasts accomplish. Even if we have been hurt or sick, or the weather's been bad, and you haven't done much with your animal, an hour here with you and everyone truly keeps you connected with your mule and keeps your head in the game. You can keep your confidence and get think through, keep your confidence and think through your skills and be ready at your next opportunity. Thank you so much, Linda. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Southern Slipping. This has been kind of the uh, theme, uh, mules that are uh, kind of doing their own thing. What do you, I guess that might just be a, a, a rule of the mule in general. They just want to do their thing, be left alone. What do you do to make a mule that's hard to catch, easier to catch after you catch her? She's fine. Yeah. Well, that's because she's been taught by people to get away from them. Now, how does this happen? The nose says three things. Come to me, go away from me and stop. That's the main three things it does. It also does backing up, but that's, we'll do less. The shoulder is your friendly zone. Shoulder is where you go all the time to catch your mule, your donkey, your horses. The hip means go away. When you step to the hip, the mule, the donkey goes away. Okay, now what happens is, is people got the halter in their hand and they go right to the mule's nose. Well, the mule's looking at him. He got his head turned and saying, ah, here comes my herd leader. And all of a sudden, you're moving too fast and the mule's head goes down and looks straight ahead. You're still coming. 
The mule just said, wait a minute, this and hours are over. You're moving too fast. Don't keep on coming. But you keep coming because you're thinking, I want to go ride my mule or my donkey. Well, then the mule looks at you and then turn around and looks the other way and says, oh, you're still coming. You want me to go that way then? Because you kept going because the donkey and mule moved away from you. They left. You taught them how to not be get caught. Yeah, you did. What you do instead? The mule's looking at you. He's saying, come on, visitor, and hours are on. As soon as the mule looks away, you stop. Hear that? Stop. Now move one step to the right. The mule's going to turn and look at you. The donkey's going to turn and look at you. Like, what? You, how come you stopped? How come you moved? And then they just, now they're looking at you. Now the invite's on, go back toward them again. Don't keep going toward them when they look away from you. Stop, move toward the shoulder. Anytime you go to catch your mule or donkey, always approach the shoulder. That shoulder is a neutral ground. It doesn't show any aggression. You see two mules and donkeys happy with each other. They're out there at the shoulder. They're nibbling on each other's wither. Yes, they are. Okay, now, what do I do to keep them from doing that? Keep them in a small pen. Folks, there's no reason you can give me, none, for putting them out in a great big pasture, especially if they're hard to catch. Put them in a small 10 by 20 stall or 20 by 20 stall and keep them there. Use that same thought I just told you as to how to catch them. I think the video I've got on how to communicate, we talk about that in, uh, in my first uh, video uh, about round pin work. Let's see. We've got, uh, hey, Susan Callahan's here. Love my Steve Edwards saddle. I have a top-notch equine chiropractor, and he told me not to change anything about my tack because the last two visits, no adjustments required. That is... That's about as high of praise as you can get. No adjustments Susan's required. pretty awesome. Yeah. She's pretty awesome. She was a sheriff uh, up in the northern part of the country. I think she's retired now. Are you, Susan? I don't remember. But she's a big, tall, blonde lady. And uh, I think she calls herself Surfing Blondie or something like that on her email. Crazy thing. But she's got some big old mules, and she's a good rider. Boy, she's pretty awesome. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Hooves on fire. We got a couple more questions and then we'll be on all done. Hooves on fire. Oh, Greg is watching from Northern California, rainy and 55 degrees out. Question. I am a beginner rider still taking lessons. Is a mule a good choice for a first time rider? 69 years young. <laughs> Don't ever offer me a well broke horse and a green mule. I'm going to take the green mule just on his abilities. Folks. The people that are going down the Grand Canyon all the time, most of them are not riders. Most of them. I'm going to say 50% pretty easy. Some of them that claim to be riders, um, they don't really understand what's going on either. But anyway, I, yes, but here's the thing, folks. Here's the thing with all of you, all of you, do this. This is important. Get education. Watch videos, not just me. Watch all these other people and make some decisions. Will this work for me or this not work for me? If it works for you, do it, okay? But get yourself education. Get your DVDs. Uh, uh, thanks to my buddy here, Dave. We've got over 400 e e uh, e it? YouTube videos, you know, and uh, all these articles and stuff like that. Dave has lined it out. You all have got tons of information and we got a ton more coming yet as well. So, you know, get yourself, get yourself some knowledge before you go to pull that trigger. Best thing you can do, get the knowledge. Uh, this will be our last question for the day. Hooves on Fire says, how do you get your mammoth donkey to trot or canter? <laughs> you got to build the confidence of your donkeys. Uh, the one donkey that I really enjoyed that Mark Drummond had, uh, the head chancellor, the chancellor of the L.A. College System, which Susan Sonnenberg had. And then 
uh, she passed, that little donkey passed away. Uh, her name was Strawberry. What a beautiful donkey, 16 hands high. So what do you do? You, you lope them in circles a few feet at a time, not a lot. When they go out and they do a nice right lead and they do a nice right lead and they do three or four good uh, steps on a nice lead, stop them. Give them a pet. Get off. <coughs> Loosen the cinches. Give them a good rub down again. Turn them back and now go the opposite way. Snug up your cinches. Lope again another five or six steps. Nice left lead now. Nice left lead. And does good. Stop them. Pet them. Get off. Loosen up the cinches. Give them a nice pet. Turn them back the other way. Now what I'm doing is I'm giving this mule a Steve Edwards cookie. That means give them some relaxation. I loosen up the cinches because they just did really good. Listen, when you start overdoing it with these mules, they'll literally, or these donkeys, they will literally lay down and try to keep because too much pressure. Don't try to, don't do this, folks. A lot of people do this. They take and they trot and they trot and trot and trot until they finally go into a canter. That is no way to teach a canter. Not a way to do it. It's not that's, that, folks, that is, you're going to have a problem one day and they're going to run right through your bridle. So you're taking lope them in a circle, nice right lead, nice right lead, three or four good little lead step stops, stop them, loosen up the cinches, turn them around, tighten up the cinches, left lead. Pretty soon you can lope a whole circle, smooth and easy. Why a circle? because it's easy on them. They'll be in the proper lead that way. But now let me back up. I showed, I just told you the finished product, what it's going to look like. What do you have to have first? Your donkey, your mule. If you're going to have them go into the proper lead for a canter, they've got to side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters. You hear that? In other words, they have to work off your leg. And if you are training, you want to use the Mule Riders Martingale so you can collect shoulders, you can collect their nose and stuff. But now, let's go back. If I'm going to go in a right lead, I need my donkey, my mule, to kick off a left hind leg so that as we're going, we'll start to go and I pick up on the right hand picking up on the right leg i use my right leg to go into the ribs which kicks the hip over which makes the hip push off of the left rear hip then I, i'm in the right drive cycle and i can go off and canter into a right lead do you hear that it's not just a matter of getting them to canter it's a matter of building a foundation look folks you got to build a foundation you're going to saddle for the first time build a foundation to get there you're going to put a bridle on for the first time just don't put that bit on there build a foundation to get there okay? build a foundation folks before you go to do it wonderful that is all for this week i want to thank everyone for coming and hanging out with us as always wonderful questions amazing questions and we're so grateful that you chose to spend little bit of your day hanging out with us. Of course, we'll be back here next week, uh, three o'clock California time, Pacific daylight time. Uh, as soon as the time changes though, as soon as uh, folks start adjusting their clocks, um, there will be, we Arizona, we don't change our time. So it will be one hour earlier, I believe. I think that's what it's going to be for our Eastern and Central friends and one hour later for our California friends. So that won't be next week. I think it'll be the week after that. So with the time zone change, it'll be an hour shift, but we'll be here next week. Same mule time, same mule channel. Steve, anything you want to say before we uh, say goodbye? Well, pray for this United States folks. Pray for our leaders. Use the power that God gave you to pray for these leaders. Another thing too, I pray if you'd pray for my friend, Randy Figgins, uh, Randy has got some, uh, some issues with uh, his health right now. And if you pray, God will minister to his 
to his doctors and to his nurses so that their hands will be his hands, their mind will be God's mind, and, and Randy will have the healing he needs to have. In the meantime, folks, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. And this guy here, Dave, you guys can't believe what he's done for the mule and donkey people. He's the man. We'll keep he's the doing one that's it got too. done these shows, done the articles and things like this. Uh, I was just a little fat guy out on the, on the side of a mountain uh, before Dave come into my life. And, and he's a wonderful man, good Christian man and solid husband. So anyway, thank you, Dave. I love you, buddy. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. Love you too. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.